Dinkles Until Dawn has a dynamic, ever-changing story, the facial performances and the body performances are recorded separately, with different systems. With the body capture, we use reflective bead suits and an infrared camera matrix system that drives the CG bone hierarchies in our character models. These performances cover everything from character locomotion, scene-specific performances and stunt work, most of which was recorded at studios in Pinewood and Shepparton, near London. Anna! Combining all the elements seamlessly in the final game becomes a formidable editing and logistical task. Every variation, both physical and emotional, must be combined in these multi-edits. <laughs> Scaffolding props have to stand in for the sets, because the hundreds of infrared cameras have to be able to see all of the reflective beads on the actor. The first part of getting a believable facial performance in-game is to capture topographically the actor's range of emotional expressions as separate versions of the same head. Every tiny nuance gets digitized and merged, effectively creating a model that can recreate every facial movement that the actor makes. Once the topography has been recorded, the actor's performance itself can be captured by using a predetermined set of marker points drawn precisely on the face and a high-def helmet cam wirelessly linked to capture devices. The camera is the small box where it looks like the microphone should be. Outro Sam. Mark. It records in high def the movement of the dots throughout the performance that will drive the expressions captured earlier. Unlike other systems, this form of capture is far less lossy because there are fewer interpretations between performance captured and performance rendered finally in game. The audio is also recorded via two separate Lavalier mics attached to the helmet. It takes a while for the actors to acclimatize to carrying around the recording devices and the helmet cams, but very soon the shoot becomes similar to any other effects shoot or a green screen shoot. The actors in these scenes are only recording facial animation, but use cursory body movements for pacing. Wait, and maybe we should all stick together and find everybody and make sure they're all okay, so... 1-1, one, one, the year before the prank. Take two, Mark. Other than the other actors, they have to use their imagination for everything and everywhere that they are supposed to be seeing and feeling. Idiot! so dumb! From a hot midday studio in Los Angeles to a freezing midnight mountain in British Columbia. I am Hayden Panettiere, and we are here at the studio recording Until Dawn. My name is Rami Malik, and I play Josh. My name is Megan Martin. My name is Brett Dalton. My name is Antonella Lentini, and I played Hannah and Beth. My name is Jordan Fisher, and I play the character Matthew, Matt for short. I'm Nicole Bloom, and I play Emily in the game. My name is Noah Fleiss. I am Galadriel Steinman, and I play Ashley. So Until Dawn is the story of eight teenagers who uh, revisit this cabin in the woods about a year later after a, a really traumatic experience where I've lost two of my sisters. So coming to kind of get some closure in that respect. One of the things that Larry does really well is make these multi-layered characters. And I think for just the story in general, it's, it follows the quintessential horror film plot lines, but the characters are so unique in themselves, and I think that's very cool. Oh, I hope this was the right thing to do. What? You know, getting everyone together on the anniversary. I mean, Josh seemed really pumped about us all doing something, didn't he? Yeah, no, he definitely did. I haven't seen him so excited about something in forever. Good, good. Sam, Sam and I have uh, a few things in common, such as being huge lovers of animals, and she's a huge animal lover. She's vegan, she, um, she is a pacifist. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna go as far as saying that I'm a pacifist, but uh, she's spunky and cool. I know that she, I think, is, is made fun of a little bit by the rest of them who, who think that her morals and her beliefs in that area 
are a little ridiculous and they don't agree with them, but she doesn't care. It doesn't stop her from being herself, and that's something that I hope I have in common with her. You know, he definitely uh, can be depressed at some times and a bit of a loner, but he, he takes some solace in one of his sister's friends, Sam, played by Hayden Penetere, and uh, invites everybody back to the same house the next year to kind of find some closure. Jessica is... She has a whole lot of personality. She is definitely the sort of mean girl character that, you know, at school she, she knows she's pretty, she knows that boys like her, and she's gonna use it to her advantage. He's got a big heart, and you can tell that that's very evident, especially how he treats his girlfriend, Emily, and, um, you know, he's, he's kind of a meathead, but in the best way possible. She really knows what she wants, and she manages to, to get that from whomever it is, whether it be Matt or Mike, you know, she's really driven, and I can definitely relate to that. My, my character is uh, Chris, and he is uh, what society might consider the nerd of the group, um, and, and he kind of embraces it. Um, Ashley is, she's a little more serious than some of the other girls. Um, she's definitely very intelligent and, and thoughtful. She kind of looks at the whole big picture of things. She's not quite as geeky as Chris, but they connect in a lot of ways. Mike is like big guy on campus. He's uh, the class president who has some charm and has, has a brain. And I, I don't know, people seem to like Mike. He gets away with a lot, though. He's, he can be kind of kind of jerky. The fact that he, he really just kind of wants everyone to be happy when he wants for he's, he's a people pleaser and um, it's, I, can, I can definitely attest to being you know that guy. I'm, I'm always the friend that wants everybody to be happy and wants everybody to be taken care of and that's definitely Matt. But also like this character is just so fun. I rarely get to play the bitch. And so it was really, it was really fun to do that. The spirit of things, seriously, what's wrong with you? I'm just trying to lighten the mood, Em. Don't be like that. Like what? The way you're being, you always get like this. I just think this is just the coolest thing to be a part of. And um, I just think it's gonna take the world by storm. I really do. I think this genre is the wave of the future. And I think that um, once people see the potential behind it uh, of getting to interact with the drama that you're witnessing unfold um, in such a realistic way, um, that this, this is how entertainment's going to be from now. The storyboards are vital to the production design as it allows the designer to understand the scale of the environments to be made and the detail that would be seen to create the atmosphere of a horror. This took us into concepts that took these storyboards further, visualizing the world through the color palette, the lighting, tone, and the mood, and developing key locations such as the lodge, the cable car stations, the forests themselves, the wilderness. As you can see, the environments and atmospheres changed quite a bit from warm and inviting to cold and threatening. The Millionaire's Mountain Lodge was a key example it was designed to be made from nearby stone and timber, embedding it into the landscape, with a contrasting and contemporary interior needing to be opulent and extravagant. We created dark and claustrophobic corridors with ominous and large open spaces, almost cathedral-like in size, and with huge structures to silhouette and dwarf the characters within, providing a labyrinth to explore and wander. Each character was developed with a strong visual identity in mind, with contrasting colours, tones and silhouettes to identify them, each to have their own texture, pattern and shape, so that when they were lined up you could always identify them. The costume designs allowed a range of clothes that would suit them for the cold winter weather but also have an element of style and individualism, so that the audience could look at them and relate, recognising themselves within them. A lady would like to cuddle up with her man by a nice cozy fire bathed in atmospheric mood lighting. Right. It'll get plenty toasty once we're rubbing up against each other. Mike. Yeah. Fire and mood lighting. Yes. Working with the lighting artists, we really brought the look and feel of the world together. And this required a thorough understanding of the visual language of teen horror. A key scene was where all the characters emerge out of the rear of the lodge chasing Hannah. A contrast is evident straight away from the exterior wilderness to the warmth of the lodge. 
The attention to character lighting here is through the bounce and rim lighting, accented colours and composition, creating characters that come from the dark into the light and back again with an emotional effect. Guys, there's someone outside. What the hell? What's going on? Where's my sister going? Oh, it's fine. She just can't take a joke. It was just a prank hand. Hi, my name is Graham Resnick. I'm a filmmaker, writer, director, sound designer. And uh, I started working with Larry Fessenden about 10, 15 years ago through my friend Ty West, who I grew up with and uh, have done a lot of sound design with on his films. And uh, he was producing Ty's films at the time. And uh, Ty introduced me to Larry. Larry produced my first feature and we've written together on several projects. My name is Larry Fesenden, I'm a filmmaker. I, uh, I run Glass Eye Picks, which is um, an independent production company out of New York. We make indie movies, uh, a lot of scary movies as well. Um, and uh, I got a call to audition to write uh, this video game. And uh, I called my pal Graham Resnick because Graham is a gamer and um, while I thought I could offer something to the idea of writing this multi-branching story, I knew that I would want Graham's expertise as a lover of uh, gameplay since, I guess, games were started. So, and, and, and just as a lover. That's and as a lover, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, Which is why there's so many sex jokes in the, yeah. in the game. <laughs> there was one Italian website that did say the Larry oh, Preston right. and Graham Resnick, the two lovers behind <laughs> Until Dawn. <laughs> Come here. Maybe I know how to handle you too. I am definitely ready to be handled. So uh, I wanted Graham by my side. Uh, yeah, and we we got the gig, and it was it's been an amazing ride. Oh hell yeah! Oh my God, she's taking your shirt off. What? Oh my God, Matt. What are you doing here? Uh, Hannah. I'm sorry, Hannah. Hannah. This all got out of hand, but... So in the game, the, the basic setup is that uh, a year prior to the game's start, all these kids had gone up to a, a ski lodge that was owned by the parents of one of the kids, uh, or a couple of the kids, and um, some of the teenagers played a prank on some of the other teenagers, and the terrible tragedy occurred when a few of them, uh, two sisters, ran out into a blizzard, and uh, we're never seen from again. And so now, a year later, uh, this has kind of torn apart this group of friends. They've, uh, they've gone through some trials and tribulations in the past year. The brother of the two girls has uh, had a lot of psychological issues, and, and to kind of help him cope, uh, and help them all get over it, they all return to the lodge a year later, back up on the mountain. And uh, the idea is to, to get over it, but... Um, the healing does not begin. Does not begin. <laughs> yeah. And these kids are all trying to find themselves. They've, they've, they've been through a trauma, but in general, they're just teenagers trying to figure out who they are. So they're all kind of falling into the patterns, the, the stereotypes, the, the characters they see on TV and in the movies. I think we were very interested in taking genre tropes and kind of making them uh, sort of refresh them. Hey, did you see that? Dad said it'd just be us this weekend. We're familiar with how slasher movies work. Uh, you know, most people have seen some horror movies and we have established notions and preconceptions about the roles of the players in horror movies and how they talk and how they get killed and how they have sex. And to bring you into a game that way and then subvert a lot of those expectations was kind of our, our goal. They're haunted by some incident that happened in their past, which I think you pretty much figure out that that's going to have a role in their, uh, in their interaction. <laughs> Yeah, so I think what was fun was we take some sort of stock characters and we try to give them some shape, but um, at least at the beginning they're recognizable in the, um, in the way of groups of friends. There's, you know, the jock and the, yeah. um, and the bitchy girl and the rivalries between everyone. And oh my gosh. Um, and really fun characters too. Like these, it's, 
We just had so much fun living in the minds of these characters through writing the writing the script. What do you think? Ah! Jesus! <laughs> you know, it was fun. We I think we were looking to get that kind of banter that you yeah. see both in movies, but also that you absolutely have with friends and sort of those inside jokes. And of course, as writers and as friends ourselves, we sort of developed little tracks and we try right. to give the characters that kind of vibe.